kind of want to switch gears because I want to make sure to talk about your experiences in textiles. Okay. Um, so you had your experiences in the College of Engineering mm-hmm. after three years, and then a lot of students who do um, have to transfer out of engineering, it is an emotional decision, you mm-hmm. know, because yep. what does that mean <clears throat> that you didn't make it in engineering and how do you select another major because you're not selecting that major by choice you're kind of being forced to Mm -hmm. um and so would you recommend students who need to um get out of engineering they need to change their majors um by necessity you know or even by choice Mm -hmm. um what would you say about them transferring to textiles uh i would first and foremost say if you are trying to change out of necessity, uh, really figure out what you, what it is that you want to do, um, first and foremost. Um, what it is that you want to do, what it is that you're trying to do, um, and stick to that plan. But if you um, are interested in the College of Textiles um, and you, uh, you know, you look into it and it's something that you like, I mean, I would definitely recommend um, uh, transferring into the college. It's a... It has like all the same resources that engineering has, but just on a much smaller scale for that for that college. Um, you get exposed. So, um, one, I majored in textile technology, um, and in a nutshell, I mean it's a lot more. You know, you can go online and look at the description, but I always look at it in a nutshell. Textile technology is just textile manufacturing. So, manufacturing clothing, manufacturing fabrics, manufacturing, um, you know, a lot of different things of that nature. Um, you look at the uh, you know the process of a textile product, or a lot of textile products from A to Z. So the raw material all the way out to the market, um, and you know that's just in a nutshell my little small definition. But um, the resources that you have, you know, access to uh, knitting labs, access to weaving labs, access to uh, non-wovens, access to like real world stuff that's actually going on in the in the uh, textiles uh, field. Uh, once you you know graduate, because um, you're just, not really weaving, <laughs> no. the weaving studio, it's that you're dealing with the actual like equipment, the mass production of weaving. Oh yeah, you're not yeah, sitting yeah, there yeah. at a loom. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I just want to. Yeah. I'm ca- yeah, yeah. Kind of being funny, what, but I think no, and that's important though. I mean, because I mean, so some people, you know, my knowledge, you know, I know what I'm talking about, right? But you know that that's that's good that you clarify because not everybody's exposed to textiles and knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, when you think of weaving, you think of yeah. So uh, when you think of what you just said, so yeah, uh, weaving machines as far as you know manufacturing. Um, knitting machines as far as manufacturing, non-woven as far as manufacturing on a mass production um, scale. Um, you get exposed to those technologies that you'll see in the field um, once you get out. Um, and you get the same co- same business courses and management courses as business majors do, um, you know, on top of the real world experience. And the senior design capstone project and the, the faculty members that are there um are really experts in the field so you're getting a lot of exposure to a lot of textile knowledge um so i'll say all that to say that you know you take advantage of all that if you come to the college of textiles you'll be well suited for a job um, in that field um, upon graduation because um, there's so many resources in that college and and the college is more tight-knit uh, so people know who you are and so it's not like in the college of engineering not to uh, hate on the college of engineering but just show the differences um, you, you're a name and not a number in the College of Textiles. Um, people know who you are. They know your face. Even if you didn't think they know you, who you are, people know who you are. Um, and, you know, it creates personal relationships and, um, you know, makes makes it easier to get ahead. Um, it makes it easier to um, secure whatever, you're, whatever it is that you want to secure within that college. Um, and there are a lot of career resources. Um, there's a career development center specifically for the College of Textiles and the people that work there are very awesome. Um, they really try to help you get what you want and more times than not, uh, you get exactly what you want. Um, the job placement rate in the College of Textiles is very high. Um, it's one of the reasons why I joined that college. I think it was like, when I joined, it was like 90 something percent job placement as in, um, upon graduation or at least within a year after graduation, you're employed full time. Um, in that career in that related career, in mm-hmm. that career related field uh the job placement rate was like 90 something percent um 
which is really high. So all that being said, if you are interested in the College of Textiles, if that's something that you want to do, or you can see how that College of Textiles experience can leverage you, can, can, can be leveraged for something that you can see yourself doing, um, then, you know, by all means, uh, join if you're trying to switch out of engineering or whatever major by necessity. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's a great experience and I wouldn't trade it for anything because um, it led me to where I am now. Um, was they, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say it's like your, um, the quality of your day-to-day -day in courses and stuff, like with either feeling um, connected or less stress or um, was there a difference in your quality of life versus engineering yeah, and so, textile? Yeah, so... so I'm Because I know that's one of the reasons why you're glad that you actually switched in hindsight. Yeah. Is that your like quality of life, you enjoyed the textile classes more than you enjoyed... Or you had less stress. Yeah. I don't so, know if you enjoyed them. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, if we're not talking about uh, academics and you know my interest in interest or lack thereof in, in either major, uh, if we're just talking about the quality of life in the classroom and just the overall experience, um, yes, I did enjoy my uh, experience in the College of Textiles a lot more so than I did in engineering. Like I was saying before, you were. In the College of Textiles, it's a smaller college, so you're a name and not a number. Um, so the connections, um, one, they're just more connections, period. Um, and you, they're just better relations. Um, yeah, because there's a power in relationships. Yeah, it's, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's power in relationships. It's, mm -hmm. it's who you know and not what you know. Um, well, and, and it's who knows you. And who knows you. Mm -hmm. And then you, mm -hmm. so you get to know a lot of people, and a lot of people get to know you. Um Versus, you know, in the College of Engineering, it, it's not that same way. And the classes are smaller. Um, professors really know you by name. So, um, let's, okay, so let's give an example here. So, when I was in um, the College of Engineering, one of the reasons I switched out, I got a 22 on my first status exam. Yeah, 22. Um, Out of 100? Yes. So, <laughs> a 22%. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, yeah, I'm done. Uh, but nobody knew about that except me. Like, I had to say something, right? My professor, you know, she's dealing with a lot of students. So, I mean, she just sees numbers, right? Your number, not a name. She just sees numbers, and it's like, you know, if you got this grade, like, you know, come see me or whatever, right? But she doesn't know that face, right? Or he or she doesn't know who, like, who got that 22 or who, you know. So, you know, you're embarrassed or whatever, and so you just don't go. It's like, I'm not about to show up, right? But in the College of Textiles, let's say I did get a 20. I didn't get, I never got, well, I don't know, I might have. But if I got a low grade, which has happened before, uh, your teachers, or your professors, excuse me, I put some respect on their name. Your professors, they know who you are. Even if you don't think they do, they know who you are. Just after roll on the first couple of days. Um, and you get a, let's say you get a 22, um, it's, it, they say, you know, such and such, come and talk to me. Eric, come and talk to me after class. Like, dang, all right. You might go through a slight embarrassment but uh, just because they're calling you out a little bit. But um, it's like they still they care enough and they know you enough to ask you, okay, well, what's going on? You know, why? What happened here? Um, and then you go to their office and talk to them and work some things out. And then, boom, um, you know, your grade is better because they cared for you because they knew who you were. Um, and just all of that just nurtures your success. Um, it takes a village and it doesn't take, in, in engineering, it's like survival of the fittest. And it's like, you know, every man for himself to an extent. I mean, even when, if you're trying to get into like groups to succeed, I mean, you have to like fight to get in these groups. So you have to make sure you leverage these connections for yourself. Whereas the college of textiles, I mean, it just all comes naturally. Everybody just wants to succeed. And it's just kind of like, you know, everybody's a family rather than like, I don't know, some strangers just trying to patch some stuff together just to get a grade. Um, people just actually care about you. So, And um, then you won awards for your senior project? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, for my senior design capstone project, my teammates and I, uh, we were working on designing the fabric for a patented two-sheet turning system for a hospital bed sheet. Um, 
Can you say that again? Yeah. Just, it's a... Yeah. So, uh, I guess in layman's terms, mm-hmm. uh, let me start with the problem. So, the issue is that um, for bedridden patients in hospitals, people who are like either paralyzed or just don't move a lot around in their bed, um, they get a lot of bed sores or pressure ulcers on their skin, which is essentially like skin breakdown. Your skin breaking down, um, in some cases breaking down down to the bone. Um, and so our sponsor had a group of students from, I think, University of Virginia um, to design a bed sheet turning system um, to kind of help reduce that. So um, long story short, they took a fitted sheet and attached it to a top sheet and was able to make an attachment from that top sheet to a chain lift. And so that would turn patients and so that would reduce um, the possibility of getting a bed sore from just sitting there in the bed. Um, but what my group did, we um, designed the fabric um, for that two sheet turning system because the typical uh, bed sheets are made out of poly cotton, uh, polyester and cotton, which is kind of soft, but when you move on it, it's kind of rough and that kind of makes your skin a little bit more brittle making you more susceptible to bed sores. So we designed a fabric that was a lot more softer, designed a fabric that was, um, that wicked moisture, uh, was a lot more air permeable, um, all in an effort, uh, and designed a fabric that was a lot uh, more stronger, could uphold to, uphold to, could withstand up to 500 pounds, um, excuse me, and, uh, you know, our design, our fabric design, in conjunction with that turning system, received first place um, at our senior design day. Um, so that was pretty big. Uh, that was mm-hmm. something that I had never been a part of. Didn't even know, like, really up until, like, a few days before my senior design class started that I would be a part of that project. Um, and it has real-world implications, applications. Um, people actually die from bed sores. And so we designed a product that will help reduce those deaths um, and just the prevalence of acquiring bed sores. So that was a, a wonderful experience. So the College of Textiles really exposes you to like real world, um, real world technologies, but also real world, real world technologies regarding you know the, the machines and technologies and within the college, but also you know these products that they put you on um, allow you to, to go out and experience real world applications too. So um, it's just the whole college. It's it's a wonderful experience. Even though I'm not going into the college into the textiles field, um, uh, it, it's I would highly recommend it if you're trying to you know pursue a career in textiles or even just join the college of textiles. Yeah, because I think that's the thing um, too. Is that textiles isn't just clothing. You know, it's the um, textiles impacts literally like life and death situations. Mm -hmm. And I know the other thing they, you know, it's like designing um, the clothing for um, people fighting fires. Yeah. It's like clothing, uniforms. uh, It's they have automotive applications, medical applications, um, baby wipes. Um, They are what we call non-wovens. and that's a uh, a textile. Um, I was saying met, I was saying automotive applications. Um, the thread that goes into the the thread that goes into um, you know your headrests and your car, um, even the, even like the leather, um, and we design that type of, that type of stuff. Um, there are components within tires um, that are textile based or textile. Uh, uh, just textile based uh, that you work with there's a lot of uh, technical applications air uh, not, I'm sorry um, parachutes uh, fish nets uh, a lot of different things a lot of different random things that um, textiles uh, uh, is involved with so um, it's not just you know like like you were saying it's not just clothing um, there's a lot of technical aspects to it there's a lot of medical aspects and automotive among other things so it's 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 a bevy of things Mm -hmm. yeah so the yeah that career is like directly impacting health well-being um you know ability for people to you know save other people you know jobs Mm -hmm. etc yeah so um 
you know, because I know there is a major like medical textiles or, you know, so they have yeah. that specific. Yeah, within the College of Textiles and the College of <clears throat> and Textile Technology major specifically, um, there's three app, there's three concentrations, medical textiles, technical textiles, and then you have a supply chain operations mm -hmm. um, concentration as well. And that's just for the textile technology major. Um, you have other majors like polymer color chemistry, fashion and textile management, fashion and textile design, um, textile engineering, um, and I may be forgetting one or two other majors, but um, there's a lot of variety in the College of Textiles. Mm -hmm. Now, um, with your new job, you have, there's, in your benefits package, they have benefits for you to get a graduate degree. So, um, yeah, if we can start talking about, too, what do you want to do for your second degree? Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I want to take this time during this development program to kind of figure out exactly what I want to do. But as of right now, I want to get a graduate degree, um, just an MBA, not just an MBA, but <laughs> <laughs> I want to get an MBA. Which um, is a master's in master's business. Master's in business administration mm -hmm. um, and kind of figure out, you know, exactly what I want to do with that. But um because that's I mean, a very versatile degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my whole thing is about being versatile and opening up a lot of opportunities, um, you know, a lot of different doors to, to get into. Um, so, yeah, definitely want to get an MBA and have, you know, my company pay for it or get reimbursed for it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's is there goal. a cap on how much you can spend, like, per year? So, like, the difference between tuition at NC State versus Wake Forest. You know, there's uh you know, there's a major difference between that um tuition. Or is it like whatever degree they'll pay for it? Uh so the specifics I still gotta figure out. Mm -hmm. Um you know, once I get uh I guess I can ask that at orientation on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> um and you know, within my first um you know when I when when I become officially hired, um, when I officially start my first day, um, can ask those questions. Um, but I have to figure those mm -hmm. things out. So I have to come back on the next episode <laughs> and let you guys know, you know, uh, the specifics as far as uh, tuition reimbursement and how that will play out. Uh, yeah, because mm -hmm. that adds on to your annual salary, in theory. You know, so if it, you spend five thousand dollars per semester on a graduate degree, and they refund you at a hundred percent, you know it it balances out, but it's free. And then once you get the degree, um, you know your Making your value so go more. your value yeah. goes up because you have a lot more skills. Um, you add a lot more value to the company. You're able to do a lot more for them, and your salary increases. So, um, you know, you become more skilled, and then you get paid for that. So you're getting paid to go to school to uh, earn more money. To earn more money. Yeah, to earn more money. And it's mm -hmm. so uh, it's it's a wonderful thing. Um, it's It benefits, you know, yourself. Obviously, you get paid more, but it also benefits your company uh, because mm -hmm. on the other side of that, um, you get to add more value to them. Um, yeah, you have more choices as mm -hmm. to... More choices, more responsibilities. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. yeah, so... Mm -hmm. Um, even, even if you, you know, you get that degree and decide to go in another direction with another company, um, you know, you still have more leverage, more skills, um, and you still got that degree for free. So, you know, I mean, they're probably like contractual obligations, um, you know, with your company that you decide to get this MBA with. So you may have to stay on, you know, for a little bit longer, but on the other side of that, should you, you know, decide to go in another direction, um, you have at the end of the day the degree was free so you have you know a lot of leverage and a lot of skills um to use um you know for for yourself and to, for your gain um because you you add value to your company but then you also add value to this other company that you're trying to work for as well because of those skills mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you're just you become a a beast when you, you know you <laughs> keep going you know education is powerful um mm -hmm. uh, it's just it's crazy you know just it's it's a piece of paper, but it's what you learn along the way, and it's what is it's who you know along the way. It's what you gain along the way that just adds to you as a person, and it's just you just become more powerful. Like you just do so. And it is possible, even when you feel like it is impossible. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, there is there is it's 
it's yeah, it's it's definitely possible. Anything is possible. Um, if you put your mind to it, and it sounds so cliche, but if you put your mind to it, it there's it, it's 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 definitely possible. Um, you just have to figure out a way. Um, and you know, if you work towards it, it'll happen. Um, I didn't know if I was gonna graduate. Um, and and here I am now. I just kept working. Um, and and how I've graduated, and then after graduation, I didn't know if I was gonna have a job. Um, yeah, because you were going on a I lot of interviews. Interview but. after interview after interview after interview after interview after interview, phone calls, traveling, all while I'm in school, and everyone, for one reason or another, was telling me no. Um, you know, you're not. We're gonna go in a different direction, or we're gonna delay this because. Our previous uh, offers uh, all accepted, so we're gonna have to wait to you're gonna have to wait till the next fiscal year, or you know stuff like that. It's like, what? Why did you bring me in anyway? But you know, so all that being said, it took a toll on me mentally, and I didn't know if I was gonna have a job, and you know, but I just kept working, kept grinding, and kept trying to reach out to my connections and resources, and and here I am now. And um, had I accept had those other jobs gave me an offer, it definitely wouldn't have been as great as it is now. So. Um, go for what you want, you know, no matter what doors are being slammed in your face. If it seems impossible, it is possible. Um, keep working, keep grinding, and um, you'll get what you want. Plus some. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Because, <laughs> you know, what, going back to what we, you know, talked about in the beginning, I mean, this offer is just way more than what I expected. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be... You don't have to be perfect, you know, in college. Oh, so no. to get that. Yeah, so. So, I mean, that's the piece, too, is when I think students are concerned about specific grades or not having enough experience or, you know, kind of whatever, is that it's not necessarily going to make or break you with regard to getting a job. Yeah, so, I mean, me specifically, I mean, my GPA... I mean, Sarah knows my GPA. Well, I don't have a GPA anymore because I graduated. <laughs> <laughs> but my GPA at graduation is, you know, um, everybody wants to say a 3.0, but let's just say I didn't have a 3.0. Um, and my, I would say my GPA wasn't competitive. I'll say that. Uh, but I, that was one imperfection was my GPA. But I still won. I'm a great person to toot my own horn but i'm a great person i have a great personality and that is a skill um you have to be personable but also the work experience that i've had uh, i've interned um, three separate times over my career academic career on top of being uh, involved in leadership roles here on campus uh, working part-time jobs um and getting a few awards um all of that matters as well so um and like I said, I'm not perfect. There's things I have to work on still, but um, you don't have to be perfect to get a job. And employers know that. You might think like, oh, they recognize that I can't do this or I'm not as good at that. No, like employers know that no one is perfect. And when you try to get on for a job, they know that. And they will train you more likely than not um, for whatever it is that you're lacking in. Or there will be an opportunity to improve on whatever it is that you're lacking in. Just be transparent, be yourself, and things will work out for you. The, I mean, it's just great to experience your success with you. Mm -hmm. You know, knowing um, the four years that we've worked together. Yeah. Uh, it's been... Uh, it's, I still i am at a loss for words. Just the fact that I have a degree where I come from and where I'm going. Um, it's just an incredible story. Um, not, I'm not tooting my own horn, but if I just saw my story on it's another piece of... It's the truth. It's I mean, a fact. If I saw my story mm -hmm. on somebody else's... If I was reading my story, I would be like, geez, you know? And I actually went through it, so it means that much more. Um, so it's just it's it's incredible, and it's, it's only up from here, you know? It's only up from here. So... Uh, I would encourage everybody, you know, college students, um, stick to who you are. 
Um, if you serve a higher power, stick to that. Um, stick to who you are. Stick to your goals um, because they will happen. You have to keep working towards it. And it prob things probably won't go as planned. I had a plan coming in to the university, um, and nothing went as planned as, as you can see over these two episodes. Um, but at the end of the day, I still got <clears throat> what I set out for. Uh, wanted a job in Charlotte. I wanted to be in a development program. Wanted to become uh, a manager eventually. Um, I wanted a graduate degree, and I wanted my company to pay for it. And I just wanted a degree, period, right? Just an undergrad degree. And I got all of that plus some. Um, at times, thought about dropping out, but didn't. And I stuck the course, just kept working. So if I can do it, and it's cliche too, but if I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's real. That's real. TRIO Student Support Services Program and Student Support Services STEM are federally funded college retention and completion programs. These programs focus on academic, personal, and career support for under-resourced undergraduate students. At TRIO SSS and SSS STEM, our goal is helping our students reach their goals. We are currently accepting new students to our program. Apply today. Go to www.ncsu.edu to learn more about Student Support Services at NC State.